G'day guys, it's Adam Kogan here and I am in the SSW TV studios and we are running a NDC track for NDC Sydney and I have Arafat Tassin here. How are you Arafat? Very well, thank you. Good to see you again. Good to see you too. Yes, so you're talking about the coolest topic of all, yeah. bots. Yes. Bots, you know, I love bots. Um, when you think about bots, are you thinking about typing a question or are you thinking about speaking a question? So, yeah, so I'm thinking about both actually. So yeah. when I'm building bots, uh, I try to keep inclusive. So I want my bot to function when, whenever someone is texting, someone is writing. And uh, I want to bot my bots to enable for voice as well. And the reason for this is these days, as you can see that assistants, the digital assistants are more inclined towards voice. So I, if, if someone cannot speak, he or she should be able to write as well. So the bot should understand the context. Hmm. And do you do, like if we look at the stats, hmm. is, is there more questions being asked to bots typing or, or speaking? These days, yes, but it is, uh, it is predicted that the voice bots will be taking over the textual bots, or the top bots which are hmm. uh, functioning with the text. But these days, as we, if we look at the statistics, we can see that there are more bots with the text support rather than voice ones. Right, okay. So when someone says uh, bots, I'm not, I'm not completely understanding what do you mean? What's your answer? So bots are just, the, uh, it's just a conversational service. So it's a service that is, uh, that is, in, that is just an interacting, just interacting with the with the with the with the one with the person who is just asking some questions, so it's like a messenger messenger, but the there is no one there's no person in, in front of that uh, uh, the the person who is asking the question. So it's just like an, an automated agent who is responding to that person. Right. Okay. It's it's like um, when my wife asks, "How is your day?" and I say, "Fine." Yes. Is that like a bot? Automatic. So if your bot, if your if your wife is not your like, you have you have taken taken like very bad example, <laughs> but, but yeah, uh, it can be uh, if you if you replace your wife with the bot, yes. then yes, this is the context. Okay, awesome. Now, uh, is a bot yeah. the same as conversational UI? Because I hear you say conversational UI all the time. Do you just mean bot? So uh, conversational AI is. Uh, is yes, it can. Bot bot is part of that conversational AI uh, because conversation. But does it mean the same thing? Yes. Yeah, there's interchangeable terms. Yes, interchangeable. Right. Okay. So, um, what? Uh, one of the things I really notice is some people mm. trust their bot more. So when I say bot, I'm thinking, you know, Siri on yeah. an iPhone yeah. or you know Google Assistant or whatever. Um, some of the guys in our office. They trust it so much, they just say, send a text to my wife saying, I'll be home at 4 p.m. and I'll pick up this in the groceries and then I'll pick up my daughter and I'll be home by you know, 7 p.m. Send. Like they don't even check it, they send. I would never actually trust it before checking what it said, fixing it and then pressing send. Um, and do you have any stats on how many people trust their bot? So as we, as we see the Gartner's statistics for just 2020, yep. we can see that the digital assistants have been marked as top third trend for for the for 2020. Oh, have so they? yes. So what are the other two? Uh, I think there were. I, I don't recall, but you only yeah. you only cared about which one bot, the, bot. where the bots were. <laughs> yeah. So, but by looking at the statistics, you can imagine that people have a trust and. Customers who are using that, uh, the businesses who are implementing that, they have got a trust to do that. And the, the applications which are accessing your messaging, uh, the applications which are ap accessing your applications, uh, or the bots which are accessing your applications, uh, they are they have gone through a scrutiny process, mm. and uh, that's why the big giants like Google, Apple, Amazon, and even Microsoft, they they. They care about the privacy and everything too mm. much that they shouldn't, like nobody would allow these applications to go move forward other than like before getting scrutinized. So if they have gone through that scrutiny process, it means that 
it's okay to trust them. Okay. I, I, you've just reminded me. I remember a Gartner thing that I read probably three years ago in 2017, and it said something like, we predict by the year 2020, which we're on now, yeah. uh, people will be speaking to their bot more words than they speak to their partner. Has that happened? Uh, not yet. No, it hasn't, no. But I think you wish. <laughs> if you're still married, it hasn't happened. Uh, but yes, the adoption has increased. Right. And uh, there have been a lot of uh, companies who have already uh, built their bots and mm. they are in production. Even government agencies have built their bots. Yes. Um, within Australia, we can see there are a lot of organizations, government organizations, who have got built in very sophisticated experiences. Uh, they are not voice, they are text. But yes, it, the, the adoption rate has increased. It has not gone to 80% or 70%. But if we check, uh, check out the statistics, I think 10 to 20% is there in certain business sectors. Right, okay. So let me ask you to predict the future. Do you think that um, when we're building apps, that the bot should be in the app or it should be in the, the reporting app? So for example, when I open up SharePoint, mm. should I be able to ask SharePoint, hey, what was the largest document I worked on in the last month? Or I open up my accounting package, zero, and I say, uh, what uh, expense, account, which account have I, has undergone the biggest increase? You know, where have I started spending more money or where have I started saving money? Um, do you think that should happen in every single individual app? Or do you think that I should be opening up Power BI, connecting to zero and asking the question through there? Opening you know, my reporting app, connecting to you know, SharePoint, and I ask all my questions in that UI. Um, I think that the first one, which you have, that every, every bot, every, um, every application should have their own model built mm. in, because it depends. And like, if you want to have the unified experience, taking all the applications into one experience, it is not, it's not practically feasible right now. And uh, from the looks of what complex, from the looks of complexity, mm. I think whatever is achievable right, achievable right now is the first one where you have the different applications and you can build your uh, models based on those applications or those contexts. So that if you are talking about SharePoint, that will understand about documents, and if you are talking about zero, they, they will understand about accounting. Yeah, I, I get that, but isn't there the, the problem where the bot implementations are going to be different if we don't have a overarching preferred bot that spans out to the different things? Isn't that gonna be potentially a problem? No, so it is always recommended to have a separate experience for certain scenarios. Um, yes, it from theoretically, it, it looks very good that, oh yes, this is one code base and I can surface my this code base to across 100 channels or practically 10 channels, mm. 20 channels. But if you go deeper uh, and if you just see the implementation uh, about the bots, you will notice that, oh, this doesn't it really need over here. It, it is not even required over here. Just to give you an example, like, if I'm talking to Google, mm. and if I'm talking to Teams, so yeah. it has got different experiences. Over in my Teams channels, I've got people, I've got groups, and on my Google Assistant, I'm just talking to my assistant, that's it. So yeah. if you keep the single code base, it's yeah. going to be a problem. Yeah, I, I agree from a usability point of view, but you can imagine the amount of work every team, every app on your phone, having to implement their own bot experience, I just can't see how that's gonna be sustainable. We need a master bot, which is kind of you know, the Siri, the yeah. Alexa, the Google Assistant. You know, you need multiple implementations of those on each app, but you know, we'll see. Um, I'd like, before I jump into, um, I'd like to talk about low code, but before that, can I ask, um, I can build a code intensive solution right now, and we built quite a few of them. You can use Google, uh, Google Dialog, or you can uh, use Microsoft Bots. Mm. Uh, which one uh, do you prefer and which one, just tell us the differences of them and who's getting more traction. So from the user's end point, not from the development mm. perspective, from the user's perspective, there are two 
uh, a digital assistants which are getting more traction. Uh, number one is Alexa. The other yeah. one is oh, Assistant. Alexa. So. Not in Australia. I did those stats. Yes, uh, not Google in Australia. Yes, 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 yes. Way yes. bigger than, uh, than yes, Amazon. Yes, I, I agree to that. Yeah. Definitely, I agree to that. And uh, from even if you count uh, count on Google, so it performs better with the US locale, even if you are in Australia. Oh, so right. yeah, this yeah. is what I've tried myself. And so Google Assistant and Alexa, they have got the the good part of Google is uh, that even if it does not have too many. Actions which they, which Amazon Alexa calls the skills, which are apps, underlying apps. Even if they don't have those rich kind of apps in them, Google itself has got a very good engine mm. to, you know, con since it has your data and uh, it can have, it can predict your when your your journey, your parking spot, and all that. So it can bring everything to your bot. So it has, it is more personalized. Uh, whereas Amazon Alexa has got more skills, uh, more uh, fun to interact with, and more apps and all that. Uh, whereas Siri, on the other hand, uh, since it is very restricted to the ecosystem, so it has a very restricted ecosystem. That's why, uh, other than iOS people who are using iPhone or Mac OS or uh, who are on Apple stack, I don't think that they find it useful. Uh, um, right. the, other than these people, yeah. But if you're developing, say, a Microsoft yeah. bot, you can target Google Assistant or uh, yes. Alexa? Yes, so the good part is, now from the development point of view, mm -hmm. the best part of Microsoft bot framework is, uh, in my opinion, I could bias because I've been working since Microsoft bot framework since very long time, mm -hmm. but I've seen the evolution of this framework, mm -hmm. and I've, I can safely say that it is the, one of the most powerful frameworks to build the bot, uh, with which you can surface your bot on Google, mm. on uh, uh, Amazon Alexa. Amazon Alexa is now uh, an out-of-the-box channel. It is 100% supported by Azure Bot Surface. Uh -huh. Through Google, uh, through custom adopters, you can write Google Assistant uh, uh, bot as well, which I've shown in my demo. Uh, in addition to this, now you have the support for Zoom adopters, Zoom as well. You have support for Teams as well. So Zoom is not, supported out of the box, but it is there. Right. So apart from Siri, all of the digital agents have got the support for Microsoft Bot Framework, and it is very big. So from development point of view, I think it is the best framework, even if you are a developer or if you are a low-code developer or a citizen developer. All right, let's talk about low-code developers then. Uh, what, uh, so we now have this um, Bot Composer. Yes. And um, we, have, we have a Teams offering. Yes. So, what? Which one should you you jump into? When when is the Teams bot the most appropriate one? When should you go professional coding solution in Azure Bot or, or Google Dialog? So, Bot Framework Composer. Uh, so there are three types of ways, as you have mentioned, that Pro Code, which is the coding way, the low code way is the Bot Framework Composer, and the other way is Power Virtual Agents, which are there as a part of Teams as now yeah. as well now. So, Power Virtual Agents have got a very limited limited set of functions and some limited set of features, and they are actually the the reason for this. They're uh, built, or you can say, the developer or the people who will only go for this when they have to interact with the peop with the customers who are directly interacting with them. Let's say, uh, Power Virtual Agents are de were developed by keeping this objective in mind that the customers who people who are very closer to customers such as customer support specialist or uh, subject matter experts they can easily create the bots so you don't need to have a developer knowledge or uh, or any machine learning expertise or AI expertise to develop that but it has got a limited set of features so it has text features it does not even have the very media uh, rich rich content feature right now but from the teams, you can just create within your teams um, certain scenarios such as um, is he is is my boss is in office or uh, can I can you send this file to SharePoint things like that which you can connect with the Power Automate. Coming to the bot framework composer part, which is the low code part. And which team does that come from? So uh, this is coming from bot framework. Uh, 
uh, Microsoft Bot Framework. So is that from the Azure team or the Office team? No. So the Bot Frame, the Teams Bot, Teams yeah. One, it is coming from the Power Platform team. Mm -hmm. And this one, Bot Framework Composer team, it is coming from Azure Bot Service team. So it right. is a Microsoft Bot Framework SDK team that is that is very that is an underlying team, and they are working with Azure Bot Service, and they have created a Composer offering separately. So right. Composer, on the other end, is is called low code, but you can build the hundred percent similar experience with what you can do with code. Of course, since right. it is code, you can manipulate and do a lot so of things. So composer, I'm writing code. No, 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 no code. No, no code. Okay, no no code. code. It's low code. You can write some code as well. You can connect with the Azure functions. Right. You can connect uh, uh, with okay. external services with right. QA Maker, and you can build in. You can have built in Lewis models. So it is one of the most powerful low code offerings. But when you go to the code side, if you are, if you want to build like say custom adopters, yes, then you don't have the facility or capability to do that in Composer or in Power right. Virtual Agents. You need, you must code over there. Okay. So yeah. So tell me about the debugging experience. I have a problem in the Power Platform yeah. thing. Like how do I write it? It's not giving me the answer I'm expecting. How do I debug that? How do I debug in the low code experience of Composer? And we know the debugging experience of, of you know, Bot. Azure Bot's there, yeah. rock solid debugging yeah. experience. Yes. So debugging experience is not there uh, yet. Like you cannot, you cannot have the similar debugging experience as you could do the, in code. You can only play with the tracing. So tracing, you can have the tracing over there in Composer and you will just write, okay, whenever it happens, like we do in JavaScript by just giving alerts or by putting a debugger, but that debugger is a breakpoint debugger. This, there is no breakpoint functionality right now in Composer or in our virtual agents. Okay, so we, it doesn't feel like there's enough space for you know, Teams bots and Composer bots. They feel like there's a lot of crossover there. So for exactly, like the, you have said it correctly, uh, the bot framework Composer has just released, like they have just released last year and they have improved a lot but there is a lot of work to do and uh, when you have created a bot from bot framework composer so it directly goes to the azure right. so from azure you can build the sophisticated experience for teams as well the teams one which you are referring has just released like last month so yes. i think it will take a lot of time okay. to get improved so let me ask you about the devops experience okay um what is the the story with having you know a, a test and a you know production in the the three different areas? Can I can I have that? Can I um, yes. I can do all, I can check this stuff into source control, even though it's it's done. So for again for the code way it is usual uh, yes. like your web apps. Yes. Uh, for the composer one. You can have the test bots, but there is no source control available over there. So they, since there's no source- Where am I saving it to? So it is, you can save it locally and you can save it to uh, Azure as yes. well. You can publish it right from there. Yep. But there is no way to compare compare your changes. So there's no source control. So you, like you, you just have one source and if you are making a change, that change, that's it. Right, yeah. okay, all right. So let's um, let's just talk about in the industry. I thought that we would be further with bots. I thought that you know when like I saw lots of cool examples with healthcare, mm -hmm. and I tried many with uh, airlines. You know, you, airlines should have been more successful. I would have thought. Now they've got no hope with coronavirus. But you know, in the early days, you could say, "Hey, I want to fly to New York, uh, and I'd like to be there on this day." And uh, then it would say, "Hey, do you care if you land in? Oh, do you have do you have a frequent flyer? Yes, I'm a Qantas member. Uh, do you do you prefer to stop in San Francisco or LA? You just answer all the missing pieces. Yes, but it didn't really take off. Which which industries have really nailed bots? Oh, so customer uh, customer services, retail mm -hmm. mostly, but retail is a big business industry, so." It, uh, if we narrow it down, then I think customer services have done a great job. Uh, as I discussed about government sector as well, so mm -hmm. a lot of government sector, uh, their business verticals which are involved 
which have got a direct connection with customers they are doing a really great job and uh, i have seen some shopping websites now mm. who have started developing their uh, experiences in australia and they are good so why airline did not work i in personally think that it is because of their design and their investment so a lot of people jump into this bot space by just looking at this that oh it's so cool let's get into this and then they end up with a very bad design so design matters a lot and if you pro- if you design your solution in a way that should help your customer i think it will be a successful one if you design it in this way that okay this will my company my customer will ask only these kind of questions mm. you are never going to handle these uh, scenarios mm-hmm. because because natural conversation is very complex i i have a different theory i think that when a bot has to ask you a lot of questions and you don't have a successful resolution at the end you are quite turned off if you use a bot that only asks you for a, a few questions and you learn something and you get something it's actually a positive experience but if you're trying to get a ticket and it has to ask you 10 different questions and you still haven't got what you wanted and it in the end it's just easy get get lost i'll go to the website i'll ask the questions i'll compare a couple of screens a couple of airlines and just do it myself uh, i wonder if that's uh, so a- uh, for this one as you have mm. already mentioned that you the way it has been designed that you you had to answer those 10 questions what if i just if 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 it is for airline what if i just come to uh, and, or i just log into my phone and i open it up and I, x airline let's say and i i realized that okay i want to book a flight mm. from sydney to melbourne on 14th of november let's say which mm. is not going to happen but yes on 14th of november so uh, in that utterance in that sentence if my bot is intelligent enough to get all the entities all the intents all the you know required information then my bot should only answer that okay this is what i have got this is what i'm missing please answer these questions mm. so if if we are and the tools are available to to handle this these kind kind of information uh, interactions but if we are just going back to this old school way of uh, making sequential dialogues then we are no different than ivr we are still no different from what ivr interactive oh, voice vr right so we are we are already there so that's why if you want to replace ivr experience we should be implementing natural language capabilities into our bot. Mm. Yep. All right, I'm with you. So I might finish off what industries have not adopted bots but should. Banking they have started adopting it but I think because of regulations they right. they should they should do that. Oh, yeah. Airlines have you as, yeah. as you have mentioned rightly. And uh, yes, there is one more which I would like to see as price comparison bots so yes. they they should be there rather than we go and check all the specs and all that yep. so they they should be smart enough to give us this these are the recommendations this is one you should buy right i'd like to see if there's a bot that could get a better deal than my wife can get she <laughs> is the ultimate comparison shopper <laughs> my goodness i bet she compared me a few times <laughs> so um we should get back to the ndc stream and it was great talking to you arafat i really enjoyed it And this is Adam Kogan signing off for SSW TV.